Hi, I'm Clément Levallois, I'm a social scientist, uh, and I would like to present you a tool I created in order to uh, create um, dynamic maps of science. Let me uh, first tell you where uh, to find the software. Um, please visit my website, clementlevallois.net. There is a software uh, tab or menu uh, that you can click and uh, the instructions are there. The software is called Overlead, and let me tell you now what it does. So you have uh, Lut Leidersdorf from uh, the University of Amsterdam uh, and colleagues who created uh, maps of science. So in practice that looks like this. These are uh, scientific fields identified by um, ISI subject categories uh, and each node or scientific field is connected if uh, the two scientific fields uh, are um, co-citing uh, have co-citations. With these maps, uh, what they uh, suggest you can do, and it's uh, actually very useful, is uh, let me scroll down, is resize the nodes according to the number of publications that uh, appear in these scientific fields. So what you see here is uh, the, are the publications from uh, three different universities and they simply resize the nodes of the map you've just seen, resizing the nodes according to the frequency of publications in the corresponding uh, field. So you see, for example, that the LSE at the bottom right has a lot of publications um, in economics, politics, and geography, not very surprisingly. And uh, Georgia Tech has a very different profile, while while University of the, the researchers at the University of Amsterdam um, have publications centered in clinical medicine or biomedical uh, sciences. Uh, what the software uh, Overlead does uh, is to create these maps, but in a dynamic way, in the sense that uh, you will be able to uh, uh, make movies of uh, these maps evolving through time depending on the number of publications in each field for each year. Okay, so once you've downloaded the software uh, on my website, I invite you to first um, download some uh, uh, bibliometric uh, records from ISI Web of Knowledge. Uh, very, so I have an example already. Let's say you are interested in the evolution of publications of neuroethics, and as the, the name of this field suggests, you would expect some uh, publications in neuroscience, but also in, in ethics and elsewhere. You do that. Um, be careful to untick these three boxes, since map of sciences do not include art and the humanities in the present uh, version. But as you see here, you can really select the whole range of yours. Search. It returns 302 uh, publications that you save on your uh, computer. And again, on, in this step two, uh, select full records because we don't need just authors, title, and source, but also the subject categories and their web of science categories as well. And here you see, click save, and you can keep the default choice. Just click save, and without doing anything, a pop-up window should appear. In a few seconds, no. Yes. Um, and I suggest that you uh, save this file in the same directory where uh, where you downloaded and unzipped. Uh, overly. So that's, even if you can't see it here, that's where the, uh, the software is, so I just click save. Okay, it's there. Now we are done with the, uh, with the ISI website part, and we can go to the software. So as you see, I have it here, uh, with, uh, next to the file I, I just uh, downloaded. So I launch the software, and uh, well, the interface is simple. You just select uh, the file you downloaded, so it's this one. I open it. Then I could launch the the creation of the overlay, but before that, I just want to show you uh, that you have the choice between 
two parameters. Uh, either uh, you want to map the publications according to the web of science categories they belong to, or according to their subject categories. If, if you are not familiar with the distinction between the two, please visit uh, uh, Lootleiders.org's website, uh, the one I've shown at the beginning, and the difference is explained. That's more. That's basically two different categorizations made by uh, Isaiah Thompson Reuters. Uh, web of Science is more recent. Uh, for this demo, I just choose subject categories. Okay, now you can create the overlay. And that's it. So you've seen in the background that a new file has been created. Uh, and that's the file containing the network representation of your publications across time. But the network representation of these publications across time. So how do you use this uh, file? Um, it's a bit late in the demo to say, but you uh, use it with uh, Giphy, which is a network, uh, I mean a software to visualize networks, and that's one of the only one um, that uh, can um, uh, that uh, uh, includes the dynamic representations representation of networks. So I have Giphy opened already. Already, uh, you can download it very quickly, and it installs for PC and Mac, Mac and Linux. Uh, the aspect of the software might be a bit different from for you, uh, but the, the all the tabs uh, should, should be there. So the first thing is to open the file that you created, the one with the GEXF extension. Open it. This window appears, that's simply a report window saying that the import uh, was fine, so you click OK. And the, the file, the, well, the network should appear now. So that's the map of uh, science uh, uh, reworked with your publications, but as you see, some uh, last uh, uh, operations should be done. So the most important is to go on this ranking tab. You see, you have different tabs here. Again, these tabs might appear dif at different parts of your screen, but you should be able to find the ranking tab. And there, click on node. You see, you can say node or edges. Click on nodes and choose the freq uh, attributes. That's the attribute of the nodes that contains the information about uh, the uh, how many publications appear in your uh, each of the scientific fields. So you see, it's a node freq. And then you will resize the uh, nodes according to the publications. To do that, you click on this diamond-shaped icon. This is the one that takes care of resize of, of the nodes. Uh, I suggest you uh, choose these default parameters, but you are very free to uh, change them. Um, clicking on spin on spleen, spline, uh, give you the choice between different ways of resizing. Selecting this one has, or this one, uh, has the effect of uh, logarithmic transform. Uh, only the uh, biggest nodes will be, uh, uh, will be apparent, the others will be flattened. And for readability, that's quite convenient. Now you are ready to apply this uh, resizing operation, but before clicking on this apply button, do click on this link here, this icon, because that's what gives it uh, uh, the dynamic aspect. Then you click on auto apply. Okay, it does work, but you notice that you don't have any labels on your node and you'd like to have some. So you go on the bottom right corner of the screen and you click on this little arrow that opens an extra panel with extra options. And here you have tabs. So do click labels, then tick nodes. You want to see the uh, label of the nodes. And you have the labels appearing. That's awful. So you go back to the ranking uh, tab that we already used. And click on this. Well, you can't really see it, but it's an A for labels. Uh, and uh, with a little diamond. On top of it, in, in, uh, which indicates a resize of uh, the resize of labels. So you click on there. Spline should be the same, yes. And you resize the labels according to uh, the frequency attribute. So.
something happened, but the size is much too big, so you go back to the labels panel and size it down to something you can read. Okay, and for extra readability, what I suggest is that uh, you go here and click on this light bulb that really just shifts the uh, colors to a, a, a dark background. And now you're done, so you can just hide this uh, bottom panel. And you can do it just as I just do now, uh, center the graph. You can do that with uh, the right click on your mouse. And we are ready to see the movie in action. Uh, what you see here at the bottom is a timeline uh, for dynamic graph. If you don't see it appearing, uh, you can you don't see that on the screenshot, on the screencast, but you, you uh, have a window menu on top of the Giphy uh, interface and clicking on, clicking, clicking on window, then timeline, you would see it appear. But I, I already have it here. Anyway, you, you have it here, you click on the left arrow, uh, on the arrow on the left, and this uh, activates the timeline. And moving your mouse right to the Far right, you can, as you see, you can change the uh, you can change the uh, uh, the window, the time window uh, for your graph. So I just select a very wow, well, could be a, a, a time window from early nine, early eighty six to uh, to eighty eight. And it means that uh, only the uh, it means that the ranking operation, that is the size of the nodes, will uh, take only in consideration the uh, uh, the, va uh, the values of the frequency from 86 to 88. And now, if you slide this window in the future, as I do now. You see the evolution of publications in neuroethics. Up to today. And that's it.